Hello, I'm Jay, owner of Volunteer Audio in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. I'm fixing to do an audio upgrade on this beautiful tri-glide, but I wanted to take a second and touch on why we flash the stock radio. So we get questions all the time. Can I upgrade my system without flashing my radio? Primarily people ask this because they're a little confused. They don't know how to do it, where they're gonna have to go, what it's gonna cost. I wanna make sure we cover those things. But I wanna talk about why we flash the radio first. The next video will be how to do it. So. About a year and a half ago, we got together with a guy named Traveling Tall. He's got a great YouTube channel. Definitely check him out if you haven't before. We did a huge build on a Street Glide for him, and he had the same radio that's in this Tri Glide, the new GTS radio. It's a beautiful radio. It does Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if you've got it set up right. And a lot of people are really happy with this radio, the ability to use their headsets, the ability to use CB modules, things like that. And they want to keep it but they also are in the same position that you're probably in. At 70, 80 miles an hour, they just can't hear their music. It's not clear, it's not loud. So they really wished it was louder, they wished it was better, but they don't wanna necessarily buy a new radio. So we went over in Traveling Tall's uh, bike earlier, we shot some, a series of scenes showing what the problems were with the stock radio and what the flash does to fix it. So I hope you enjoy these scenes. We're gonna bring these up from our older video. No reason to reshoot something that was already done well. And I hope it answers this question for you. And when you get done with this, check out our next video where I show you exactly how to flash it and what you can do to upgrade your system. So we've hooked up our audio control RTA to the bike. I'm playing a pink noise track. So what pink noise is for the people who don't know, it is a, it sounds like static if you're listening to it, but it's all the frequencies played at the same time at the same level. So ideally this graph, which is showing our frequencies of our audio would be flat. If it was flat, we would have the same source as if we replaced the radio with say a Sony radio. So there's a few things Harley's done here that people don't take into account. So a lot of people said use a DSP. With the DSP, I can grab each one of these frequencies and I can adjust them up and down by boosting the signal or taking the signal away. Right. So on your particular bike with this GTS radio and it's flashed factory for just two speakers and no amp, we have a pretty flat range from 200 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So that's the vocals of most, most female singers all the way up into our treble and our cymbals. Now as we come down from that though, and we get to 160 hertz, we see a slight bump, at 125 hertz to 50 hertz, we have this huge boost that Harley's done to give you more mid bass. Now, 50 is almost in the sub bass range, and we've got these small factory six and a halfs. So that's why it's so distorted at higher volumes on this factory system. So what we're gonna, if we just use the DSP, which a lot of people say we want a DSP, we gotta take into account something else. Mm -hmm. So Harley's boosted this bass, but we're sitting here and our motor's not running. They're pretty smart. They know when it's running and they change this EQ curve. So as soon as we fire the bike up and it's running, we get a completely different curve here. So if I hook the DSP up and I went through all the process of boosting this and turning this down, we made it beautiful here. When you fire your bike up and you go to leave, it's all gonna be messed up because we're gonna boost different areas and change it. So what we found though, is if we take a techno research tuner and we reprogram the factory radio as if we had the boom audio system with two amps, it gets rid of this big peak. Mm -hmm. We don't have to use a DSP, which simplifies the installation greatly. Um, and it gives us, and it also turns off this EQ change when we run our bike. So the Boom Audio 2 amp system sounds good sitting still and going down the road. So let's flash the bike, we'll redo this, and we'll see how big a change that does for us. All right, sounds good. All right, so we just got to see how bad that factory radio was on a graph. Uh, I'm going to flash this stock radio now to as if you had the Harley Boom Audio system. But I'm going to do the one that has two amps, and we're going to specifically pick that one because it does away with that uh, DSP change inside the radio between running and not running. We're going to do this, and we're going to see what our results are. Let's flash it here. So it's connecting to our bike. All right, so it says pass. We're going to go through an ignition cycle process, disconnect from the ECM, and let's retest this radio. All right, Tal, so we just 
took our techno research tuner and we flashed our radio, mm -hmm. these are our results. So I turned on our rear speakers and that seems to be functioning fine. But if you look at this RTA graph, this is great from 80 hertz to 160 hertz. Where we were before really had this large peak and we were gonna have a hard time adjusting that out. We have this good, relatively flat curve. It's slightly boosted in the vocal range, which is, is gonna be fine. It's gonna sound good going down the road. This is without a DSP. We also made it where when we start our bike up, we're gonna get these same results. So now if we wanted a little more bass or a little more high, which both are you know slightly down, all we have to do is adjust that on our radio. Yeah. Okay. So there's no need for DSP is what you're saying. In this in this case, there's no need for a DSP. So I've seen a lot of people say, you need a DSP. And I don't know if everybody understands exactly what it's for. A DSP's job is to correct a bad signal. Okay, so we're trying to correct something because our amplifier is going to amplify that signal. So if it's bad, we're amplifying something really bad. <laughs> it would have been way worse if we'd have left it alone. But with the DSP, it requires special tools like you see here in RTA to be able to see what we've done with our DSP. Uh, it also requires somebody to have pretty in-depth knowledge on how to adjust one. Uh, we can make a car sound amazing with a DSP, and there are definitely bikes that do need them. But with this new GTS radio, as long as we flash it to the boom 2 amp system, mm -hmm. I think this is a great result. So I'm just, just for my information, it may have been the older GTS that might needed it. You know, what we have seen is if, we'll, if we're willing to flash the radio, we end up with a pretty good straight curve. We're never going to get a lot of bass in the range where the factory radio is already trying to boost it. Um, but there are people that use DSPs in sound off competitions to boost the signal into the amps because we're running multiple amplifiers, bigger batteries. But the average rider, this is going to sound wonderful. And we're not going to have to worry about a DSP going bad. We don't need extensive knowledge in how to tune it. And I can ship a product that sounds great to the customer.